Hey everyone, I hope you are doing absolutely well. So I know it has been quite a long time since the last upload as we were having our second year MBBS university exams. The exams went very well and I'd like to thank you all from the bottom of our hearts for supporting the channel in the meanwhile. So if you haven't subscribed the channel already, what are you waiting for? Go and smash the subscribe button and we promise to fill your feed with the most amazing content. Now this video is very special for me. So let us quickly roll in the intro and get started. So this video is about clinical postings and let me start by telling you my story. So our clinical postings start as soon as we enter in the second year of MBBS. For me that was around late July, early August of the year 2019. Now as everyone else, I was super excited for my clinical postings and we had medicine and surgery postings to begin with. Now the very aim of this initial phase of postings was to instill in us the basics of observing the patient and their problems, then learning about the quintessential art of history taking and also about general and systemic examinations. Now there also used to be weekly clinical sessions where the teachers used to brief us about the diseases which we saw during the course of the whole week. You see, this is a very gradual and a very slow process of learning and at this level we are on the first step of this long journey that is the second year of MBBS, right? So although the first two months went very well with the initial momentum fueled by our enthusiasm but soon I started losing out my patience, right? See, the first step of learning as we are saying the first step of clinical exposure that is second year of MBBS here we at times fail to understand the concepts of whatever we see in the clinics the reason behind this is that all the theoretical knowledge is majorly stored in the books of third minor and third major years right and this demanding process with tons of patients required to master it somewhere breaks out in the middle for me, I actually got bored with postings after around two months and then going for the postings became a real struggle. I used to skip few sessions and then it was just that the attendance was the main motive. Now this thing continued for a while and then something happened which stopped everything. The COVID-19 pandemic. All our postings were stopped and we were forced to sit back at home. They say that you realize the value of something in its absence and the same was very true for my case. So during the year 2020, it used to happen with me n number of time that I used to go over the internet and look for the clinical presentations of the topic that I was reading. You see long down, hopefully one day you and I would be full time clinical practitioners, right? Mind the word I say practitioners because we will be exercising and putting into life all the theoretical knowledge gained over all these years and this process of learning starts from the day one of our clinical postings right so every little skill learned every tiny observation made and every single step that you are putting forward into learning counts and is totally worth it and that is what i want you to remember my friend okay so I realized this part when our postings were restarted and it was early February of 2021 this year. Okay, so I was posted for chest medicine department which is quite famous department of our college as our college which is LTMMC Cyan is actually the hub of respiratory disorders and tuberculosis. So I was posted in the chest medicine department and this time I attended all the sessions and all the practical clinical classes with one motive in mind and this time my motive changed so this time my motive was to build my basics and to work on it you remember last time in the year 2020 i told you that when my patients broke out so 
that time my motive changed and then the attendance was the only factor for which I used to go for postings. But this time I actually focused and I actually wanted to build my basics and work on it. So for this, I divided my working session into three, uh, you can say into three slots. So first was before postings, then during postings and then after postings. So let us talk about all this working flow which I designed for myself keeping into consideration my learning objectives and what I wanted from the posting sessions. So first let us start with what I used to do before going to the postings. So before postings what I used to do was very simple. I used to just read the theoretical portions of whatever case we were dealing in uh, in our clinical sessions. So say when we were posted for chest medicine uh, we used to deal with patients suffering from various respiratory disorders like COPD, asthma, pneumonia, pleural effusion, right? So I used to read about their pathology from our pathology books and then I used to also look out for their clinical manifestations, right? So this helped me in two ways. It helped me to see how a disease was manifested in a person and the case helped me to learn about the theory as well. The case helped me in solidifying the theory as well. Now, along with this, I also used to read the theory behind general examination. So general examination involves taking BP, checking pulses and various other things. So I used to read the theory behind this. So understanding the theory behind general examination is very important. You understand the reasoning behind uh, whatever you are dealing with, right? So this actually helped me a lot. Now let us talk about what I used to do during the postings. I'll be honest, I tried to be as attentive as possible, although couldn't maintain it for very long though. Furthermore, I used to jot down the case, not completely, but actually the important points that led to the diagnosis of the state, okay? Also, unlike before, this time I actually begin to examine the patients. I used to perform general examination, then inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation, right? So much pehle bhi bahut kuch nahi aata tha, aur ab bhi bahut kuch nahi badla tha, lekin is bar mai koshish karta ra, and I didn't let my patients to break. Now the third part, after postings. So just like after lectures, after my postings were over, I used to go home, sit back and read through my notes which I made during the posting sessions. So now before we move on, let me quickly talk about myself in the clinical postings then versus now. So then I used to seldom read and go for postings but now I would rather regularly read the theoretical portion of the concerned topics before going to the posting sessions. Then I was not interested much in the examination of patient because I didn't understood it well. But now I would do it anyways because I trusted that somehow it is the process of doing it that will help me learn about it. So now you would ask me that Ajinkya, what changes did you feel after applying all this or what results did you obtain after all these things that you made? So first, even now I didn't understood many things, but clearly I started comprehending the basics of all these. And second, the feel, the feel to get up and go for clinical postings was now pumped by curiosity, the curiosity to learn. Even though now I knew that I may fail in understanding some part or even may fail completely, but now all these things just didn't matter to me. I just let my curiosity to take control. So this posting was a very fruitful experience for me. But then again and sadly again our posting stopped because we had a second year MBBS university examinations and which as you all know got postponed innumerable times and then we finally had our exams starting from the 10th of June. So this means that from February end, February 2021 from the end of Feb till this date meant one thing no clinical postings and even now the future seems uncertain not only for us but for also our junior batch as well so the question arises what now
सो इज देर एनी वे टू डील विद दिस सिनारियो एंड स्टिल लर्न समथिंग इफ नॉट एवरी थिंग अबाउट क्लिनिकल पोस्टिंग्स वाई सेटिंग बैक एट आर होम द आंसर टू दिस नाउ इज अ बिग वाई ई एस यस प्रेप्लाडर हैज रिसेंटली इंट्रोड्यूस्ड अ गैल्वेनाइजिंग फीचर कॉल्ड क्लिनिकल सिम्युलेशन अ फीचर which i am using from the time it got introduced so first let us talk about what clinical simulation is and then i'll show you an example so clinical simulation is actually the replication of the real world healthcare problems and we as medical students get to experiment and learn through this process so let us quickly dive in into an example of a case so as i recently my last posting was in chest medicine so we'll talk about a case from respiratory disorder so now let us talk about a case here on the topic out of breath so upon history it says that a 38 year old man who works in a shipyard comes to a pulmonologist complaining of shortness of breath upon exertion then two important negative signs that he has no cough and no chest pain okay now another important highlight out here is that he has never smoked cigarette till now which is one of the major etiopathological factor concerning with copd so uh, he lives with his three uh, children and wife and his three children are healthy as well his brother died due to that is uh, a bit sad thing his brother died due to respiratory failure fine so uh, the important take away from here is that first he has shortness of breath upon exertion second he has no chest pain or cough and third very important point that he has never smoked a cigarette in his life so checking the vitals it says uh, heart rate is okay fine uh, bp is a bit low it says that respiratory rate is a bit higher than normal which is obviously because he has shortness of breath so respiratory rate says it is around 30 per minute and upon examination uh, the patient is conscious oriented to time place and person ha huh, this is important that he exhales through pursed lips so when a person exhales intentionally through pursed lips so uh, in that form of breathing that is generally seen in cases of copd but then now there is one factor uh, which is pointing out the diagnosis to go in the favor of copd but then as the person has never smoked so a uh, major etiopathological factor is missing so now we are on a 50 50 scale whether to diagnose the person uh, with copd or that he doesn't have it so anyways we'll find it out with the help of investigations so moving on to investigations now let us perform chest x ray now cxr says that there are hyper inflated lungs with tubular heart now the meaning of hyper inflated lung is that the uh, size of lung is larger than normal and because of this larger size the heart is getting compressed so there is the presence of tubular heart also there is flattening of diaphragm and widening of intercostal space now in cases of copd the person is unable to exhale out the air which leads to hyper inflation of lungs right because of obstruction in the uh, airways the person is unable to breathe out which leads to hyperinflammation so cxr has confirmed that finding let us talk about hrct so it says that the middle lobe and lower lobes are emphysematous and normal lung structures are replaced by abnormal air spaces okay now another important point uh, which can directly prove that uh, whatever we are looking out for is copd is that there is deficiency of alpha 1 antitrypsin so let us talk about the alpha 1 antitrypsin plasma concentration here so it says that the concentration is 20 mg per deciliter now in normal person like in you and me uh, the concentration ranges from a level of 75 mg per deciliter to around 150 and this level is very low very low concentration of alpha 1 antitrypsin okay so this definitely indicates that the person is suffering from copd so talking about copd now so copd is chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder and there is either partial or complete obstruction of the airways involving the trachea and then even the smaller airways right so this leads to difficulty of breathing so till now we have seen the history of the patient out here then we have also talked about the investigations 
we did chest x-ray hrcd and alpha 1 antitrypsin concentration i don't think ecg is required i may be wrong i don't know and i even don't know the importance of spirometry here so okay fine we did these three investigations now let us move on to management so first option gtn yes or no i don't think gtn is required in this case because glycerol trinitrate is a vasodilator and it is of no use in here uh, talking about beta agonist yes beta agonist like salbutamol these all are the bronchodilators and they are highly recommended in the cases of copd right uh, not uh, short acting obviously it's very long acting uh, beta agonist uh, they are indicated like uh, indicaterol Vilanterol, these all are indicated in COPD. So yeah, beta agonist is a must thing. Glucocorticoids, of course, we need to gl give glucocorticoids. Supplemental oxygen is definitely needed because the person is running out of breath. And as there is severe deficiency of alpha-1 antitrypsin, which is leading to all this. So yes, we will start the patient with alpha-1 antitrypsin augmentation therapy. I still don't know uh, how effective anticholinergic muscarinic uh, antagonists are uh, here in this case. So fine, we talked about beta agonists, glucocorticoid, supplemental oxygen and alpha-1 antitrypsin augmentation therapy. So let us finish this case. And wow, we just turned five stars. This was very good. It says, well done, doctor. You have performed well. Keep it up. Thank you so much. So let us see. Uh, it says that, yeah, CXR we performed, HRCT we performed. Spirometry was not performed okay. GTN, yeah, it was okay, not performed. So this here was wrong. Fine. So now Preplatter also provides us the related video solution like uh, if we need to go back to theory here, there are links of COPD of medicine and then COPD update of course And then here we also have the link to the question bank So overall this was a great experience and this is actually the replication of if not in complete sense It was it helps us in something like when you read when you go through all these problems So when you'll actually go to the clinics, this will help you a lot so none of us know how long we'll be staying at our homes but as long as we have this feature with us learning won't stop as of now we have our postings from 19th of july which would be online and for the same i'll be using books and preplatus clinical simulation so i hope this video helped you in learning the basics and got you introduced with this whole clinical posting scenario thank you so much for watching it and we'll be posting soon. So please subscribe if you haven't done it yet. Thank you so much.